Welcome back everyone. So today we are going to be discussing about the delay node in MASH. It's a pretty interesting node. It allows you to inherit some other objects, uh, animation, entire animation and apply it onto your MASH clones. So pretty interesting and let's quickly get into it. So I'm going to start off by taking any primitive that you want. So let's take a cube. Let's go to MASH and let's MASH this out. All right. And uh, I'm just going to change this to maybe something like a grid. All right, and we can increase the amount of clones maybe to about eight. And also let's increase the distance to right about there. I think we can go higher. Let's go for 14 and let's increase this. All right, so this seems pretty good. I'm gonna turn off the grid. Uh, so this is what our mash looks like a pretty basic looking scene and let's see we want to animate this and uh, We want to do some kind of uh, rotation or something like that uh, Maybe positioning uh, and so on So if we select our main cube what we can do is we can obviously rotate this and it will also rotate and uh, We can scale this up scale this down and we can uh, translate it, but we have to take another note for it. But uh, overall, the whole point is it's uh, too much time consuming and it do doesn't give you that uh, proper control over your mash. So what we want to do is we want to create some kind of uh, bridge between animation of one object that is being applied onto our mash. So the quickest way to do it is let's say if we take something like a locator, all right? I'm just gonna select my mash and hit H on my keyboard just to hide it for a while. So this is my locator. I'm going to scale this up quickly and let's say I'm on my first frame and if I go to my channel box and let's say if I start rotating this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let's select this one key selected and I'm going to go to about 30 frames and I'm just going to rotate this to let's say about 90 degrees. So I'm going to hit negative 90 and let's right click set key. So I have something that looks like this. And I'm gonna keep it like this for about another 60 seconds. So it's gonna say stay constant for 30 seconds. And then uh, around 90, it's gonna go back to somewhere like 180. Negative 180, yeah, there you go. So key selected, there you go. So we have a pretty basic and simple looking scene. We have a simple rotation going on. Uh, let's uh, spice this up, maybe. Let's quickly look at how our animation is overall looking on. So I'm gonna hit Shift H on my keyboard on the mesh so we can see it again. And with your mesh selected, go to your attribute, go to mesh, and here you'll find the delay node. Let's click on Add Delay. So you'll notice that we have the mode set to normal, all follow the leader, and we have some parameters and attributes to play around with. Uh, but the first thing is we want uh, some kind of input as you guys you guys can see we have a target and it's completely empty so i'm gonna just put my locator in here all right and we can just simply call this like delay controller all right there you go so we have this and you'll instantly you'll notice that uh, we can see the major difference uh, in our mash uh, due to the overall scale if i go back to my overall locator and if i change the scale to one again you'll notice that it goes back to being the normal size, since we have changed the scale of our locator, it's going to inherit that same value. So if I play this now, you'll notice that we get this nice looking animation with our locator. As simple as that. So let's uh, quickly change something. We're gonna make this even interesting. So I'm gonna hit H on my keyboard again to hide the mash and let's uh, do one thing. So when it's rotating, we wanna do is we also wanna translate this to let's say maybe two degrees on the Y axis. So let's hit zero on the first frame, key selected. We'll go to 30 again, hit uh, two units, key selected again, go to 60 and make it zero again. Right click, key selected and go to 90 and go to two and key selected. So we have zero, two, zero and two and if you want you can again bring this back to zero around 120 and there you go and we can also do a little bit of uh, rotation for our last frame so we can go for negative 90 maybe just reverse it back a little bit all right so let's go to my shift h to unhide it and let's play this again so now you have that look something like this A pretty interesting looking. 
Um, so this is what pretty much delays. Uh, it basically allows you to inherit some uh, any other objects animation. In our case, this is allocator. So let's try to make this even more interesting. If you go to your mash and if you go to your delay, and uh, you'll notice that we have the time step average, which is pretty much 10 units. You can obviously change it and you'll notice how it's influencing the overall animation, but that's not the interesting part. The interesting part is the time variation. If I change this, uh, you'll notice that we are creating variations between our animations. So if I play this, you'll notice that we are getting randomization on our cube, which is creating this amazing looking effect. And there you go. So you can just play around with this uh, on which, uh, how much variation you want basically. You can have a little bit subtle information or maybe no information at all. You can change the overall time offset and so on. And if you wanna just influence the scale or maybe the rotation, you can have that, just have the position, you can do that. And with this, you can also change the overall strength of how much strength you want to be influenced on top of this. And you can also change the random strength and so on. And let's see if you want to just have a particular area where this animation should be applied. What you can also do is I'm just going to increase this a little bit so we can see something like this. Yeah. So let's see you want to have this entire animation in the middle of this uh, entire grid. What you can do is go to your fall off, right click here and create a fall off. So the fall off will create this kind of uh, hollow sphere. Double click on your entire fall off let's scale this down and also increase the inner zone a little bit uh, just so we have more room to work with and hit 0.5 i think that is a good value and i'm going to just bring this a little upwards so when i play this you'll notice that we are getting this kind of animation so you can also invert this whole effect if you want to have a different uh look and feel to it you can change the inner zone how much uh, animation there should be applied and you can also change the overall look to having a simple cube so you can have it something like this and you can also change the overall direction of your cube or the size of your cube to look something like this that way you'll have this kind of axis and uh, again you can increase the inner zone if you want to have a stronger fall off it will give you this kind of effect so it looks pretty good uh, again, you can change the interpolation and so on. So you can go back to your delay. And uh, you can pretty much change the time offset, how much you want it uh, and whatnot on your animation. This will allow you to uh, create some variation between your delayed and the main fall off animation. And again, you can happy to play around with it. So this was pretty much uh, with the locator. Let's try to create the same effect with a different uh, primitive. So I'm going to just take a cube again and let's go to mash. Let's mash this out. And uh, in the distribute, I'm going to take the grid again. Yeah, you can pretty much take anything that you want or you can also do a radial. Uh, let's keep it to grid. And maybe 16. Uh, let's turn off the grid. So I'm going to hit 16 here and 16 here. And we have something like this. And what we can do again is we can take like something like maybe a cube, right? A cube is pretty interesting. So I'm going to hide this again. And let's see if we have this cube, right? So what we can do is we can again, uh, if I select this rotation, let's say the X rotation, I can right click in here or you can simply select this and go to edit and expression. You can copy this and paste and hit equals to time multiplied by 100 semicolon and create so we have just created an animation that's basically defining a time value which is going to keep on rolling uh, the rotation x axis as it goes through our timeline and it looks something like this so the number 100 defines the amount of speed that's going to uh, be applied onto our cube and this is what we are getting you can always go back select your rotation x an expression you can always change the value to maybe like 120 if you want to have a faster rotation and so on so if you go back to our repro let's go to our mash and let's add our delay node and in this i'm gonna select middle mouse click on your cube and drop it onto your mash you can simply hide this cube once you have applied your delay and uh, there you have it so you can also do the same thing with your primitive as well if you want to have a primitive you can do that as well 
so pretty interesting looking and again you can change the entire look and feel of this entire cube how much you want to have the impact of this in your scene all right uh, let's take a look at another scene um so let's quickly take maybe a sphere again uh sorry cube and uh, in the distribute what we can do is we can take maybe a radio you can have some amount of clones like this and you can transform this to maybe have something that looks like this so what we can do in here is we can create a locator all right and uh, in the locator i can go in here let's actually uh, reset the whole scheme and what i'm going to do is i'm going to create an animation that goes like this all right you can also use a wiggle expression if you want so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just key select this go to 30 seconds i'm going to bring this uh, sorry it's not y it's the z axis key select it 30 seconds let's come a little forward and maybe around 3 units key selected uh 60 it will probably just zero out 90 uh i'm going to go back negative 3 sorry negative 3 and around 120 it's um, pretty much back to zero all right so we'll have this kind of animation all right and with this let's add one thing we are going to add a rotation of let's say negative 90 key selected and around here it will go back to zero key selected and around 60 it will go back to zero again so zero negative 90 and zero and then around here positive 90 and then here back to zero key selected um so let's quickly see this okay looks pretty good so let's quickly apply this go to mash let's add our delay node middle mouse click and drop it so let's see this and now you will see that same animation flensing our radial so let's maybe add some variations in here uh, to have that nice grid look and you can again as i said you can increase some time offset if you want or maybe you want to decrease the strength you can have that so you'll have a less powerful scene so you want to add more things uh, into this let's say you want to add a bit more scale in here so what we can do is we can go to our first frame and uh, let's scale everything and go to mash and mets uh, maybe at out of 2 then this goes back to 1 key selected again and this pretty much goes back to 2 and let's scale this again back to 1 there you go so we have that looks something like this all right So this is pretty interesting. Again, you can do a lot of different things with this. Uh, you can create a lot of rollout animations. You wanna create some kind of uh, looping animation? You can do that, uh, where you can pretty much create some kind of fall off, where you can create uh, animation that is only working in the center, and so on. You can create maybe something like having a lot of donuts. And again, you can select a grid. Let's have a value of eight clones and uh, let's all right let's make this 24 and 24 right so let's see you have something that looks like this and then maybe you can take a cube and what you can do is um just go to your first frame all right and let's see what rotation we want i do want this z rotation so i can just key select this go to 30 and just pretty much rotate this to about 90 degrees and hit key select it uh now with this what uh, else you can do is you can move some unit let's say if you want to move this x axis you can key select this and in here you can move one or two unit forward and then key select this so what you'll have is that looks something like this all right 
and again i can reverse this out so i can do is go to zero again key selected and zero again key sorry selected so let's keep the timeline 260 and if you look at this we have something like this All right so i can go to mash again let's see how this plays out and let's quickly drop this in here all right and i'm gonna hit h on my keyboard uh, while holding the q so you'll have this okay and i'm just gonna take this plane and actually we should have uh, changed our pivot point to the bottom of our cube that will uh, will have the control to create the animation from the bottom uh, anyways uh, we can go to delay and we can pretty much offset this up and we'll have this ah uh, yeah all right there you go all right so uh pretty much smooth this out before actually um so you'll have greater control over your mash not afterwards and there you go so here you can create something that looks like this i look pretty interesting and maybe have a little bit of variations and there you go so a lot of different variations for this uh, through which you can create a looping animation if you're into abstract looping animation uh, we are going to be creating a lot of animation with the delay node but this was just to give you the idea of what uh, delay is actually and how you can use it to create uh, pretty interesting animations all right so i hope um, this helped and uh, this was pretty much it with the delay and i'll see you in the next video